I am Anil Kumar and in this video we are going to understand few techniques to solve optimization questions based on trigonometric derivatives. Here is a very popular question. It says longest rod that can be carried horizontally around a corner of a corridor. You will find this problem in most of the books and here is a very general solution. Uh, let me show you a diagram which represents the situation. Let us say this is the corner of a corridor and in a general case what we will take is we'll take different widths of this corridor. Let us say this width is smaller than the other one like this kind of right. And the really the question here is we need to find the largest rod that can be carried horizontally around a corner of the corridor. That is from here to there kind of like this. So horizontally if you're moving like this you could carry a very long rod right but when you have to turn now it makes an angle. Now at this turn the the longest could be uh, confined because of the widths of these corridors. So let's make a sketch of uh, possibility of the rod maybe kind of like this right. So let us say that is the rod which is longest for us which can be carried through this corner right. So how to find the length of this rod that is the question for us and how to solve such a question. Now in this case what we will consider here is let's say that the width of this corridor here is A in general right. So it could be any value we will consider A on this side and on the other side we will consider the width of the corridor as B. So like this. So we'll solve, uh, rather I'll show you few steps which you should apply to solve such a situation. Right? Now that is the rod, let us say this is a rod L from A to B. And we need to maximize this length. And how do we find that length? That is really the question. Now it really means that we have to find equation of length L in terms of one variable. The variable which is good to take is theta, the angle itself, right? So let that be the variable theta. So we'll say length as a function of theta is what? If this is angle theta, then that angle is also theta, right? Both are horizontal lines and that is your transverse line. Now, let's consider this point as O. Then length in terms of theta could be combination of AO and OB. So we'll, we want to write this as AO plus OB, right? Now what is AO in terms of this theta and the given corridor width of A? Now this is a right triangle, right? In this right triangle, think about Sokato. Sokato, right? Sine, cosine, and tan. Now, if what is now we are given this adjacent side, so we should use cosine, right? So, what is cos of theta? Cos of theta is adjacent side over hypotenuse. So, in this case, cos of theta is A over hypotenuse is AO, right? So, from here we can say AO is equals to A over cos theta. Perfect. So that is how we can find the length AO in terms of the given corridor width and the angle which we are taking, right? So we could write AO as A over cos theta. Now can you find OB in terms of theta? OB we could use sine theta because we know the width of the corridor as B. So in this triangle, triangle BO, let us say this point is D, let us say, sine of theta is equal to B over OB. Cross multiply, so we get OB equals to B over sine theta, right? So that is how we get our equation. So substituting this value, we can write OB as B over sine theta. 
So for any example where A and B are given to you, it could be 1, 2, 1 1.2, 1 1.5, whatever. So we are, so it will be that value over cosine theta plus the other value over sine theta. So that is how we can get our equation. Now this equation has two constants and the variable part is dependent on theta. So it is length with respect to the angle theta itself. So if we are to maximize, we need to find derivative of this function with respect to theta. So let's find the derivative. Cos theta is in the denominator. So when you, you can apply the quotient rule, if you don't know the derivative of secant and cosecant functions, you can actually apply the quotient rule and find the derivative. So this could be written as square of cos theta, square of the denominator, times derivative of a is 0. So the first term is 0, minus a times derivative of cos theta. Derivative of cos theta is minus sine theta. Let me write a times minus sine theta. So that is the derivative of the first term. For the derivative of the second term, denominator square sine square theta. Derivative of b is 0, so 0 times sine theta will be 0, minus b times derivative of sine theta, which is cosine theta. So you get your derivative, and this is the first derivative. To find critical numbers, this derivative should be 0, right? So, so the next step we have to think about is to find critical number. And that means that the derivative of this length should be equal to 0. So if that is 0, in that case, these two terms we'll just write down. So we say 0 equals to, here what we have minus times minus is plus, we have a sine theta divided by cos square theta minus times plus is minus b cos theta over sine square theta. So now we can take it on the other side and cross multiply, right? So we could write this as b cos theta over sine theta equals to a sine theta over, I'm sorry, this is sine square theta over cos square theta. This is sine square theta, not sine theta, right? So we brought this and now we can cross multiply. So if you cross multiply, you get b cos cube theta equals to a sine cube theta. Now dividing, we get b over a equals to sine cube theta over cos cube theta, which is indeed tan cube theta. So we know tan cube theta is b over a and from here you can find what theta is. So theta will be equals to tan inverse of cube root of b over a, right? So that is how you get your critical angle, right? So we found the critical angle, right? So once you find the critical angle, then the next step for you should be to show that this indeed represents the maximum, right? So, so what you do here is you find the angle using your calculator. Once you know B and A, you can always find this angle, right? Then you do the confirmation that this angle really represents maximum. How are you going to do it? Take a point on either side of the critical angle, theta. So the angle for us is cube root of B over A, right? then you take an angle which is less than and the one which is more than, right? Substitute that value in the derivative. You will notice that the derivative of the function is increasing on this side and decreasing on the other side. That indicates the maximum length. So you have to do that part to be sure that this angle which you've got really represents a maximum, right? That is one part. Now, second part which you have to do after this is, once you have shown that this is maximum, that ensures maximum for theta equals to tan inverse 
cube root of b over a right now the next part is to find the length itself to find the length what you can do is once you know this angle substitute the angle here in your original expression you know a and b you know angle theta so you can find the length right so that is how you will get the maximum length of this rod which can be carried over there there is an alternate way to calculate the length also and let me share that also for it, with you the alternate method is kind of like this think about a triangle with angle theta and what are we saying we are saying that tan theta equals to cube root of b over a tan theta is equals to cube root of b over a right now tan theta is opposite over adjacent side so that really means if the opposite side is 1 I mean cube root of I mean opposite side is cube root of b over a then the adjacent side is 1 right? that is what it means then only you get tan theta as cube root of b over a correct and if that is the case then what is the hypotenuse? This is your right triangle. Hypotenuse is square of these two square roots. Add the square, that means 1 plus square of this number. I could write this as b over a to the power of 2 over 3, right? That is square of this square root. So that becomes the hypotenuse of this triangle. And now from here, you get the value of cosine and sine, right? So cos is adjacent over hypotenuse, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. When they are reciprocal functions, you'll of course write hypotenuse in the numerator and this is 1 over that, right? But you could use these values directly and find the length L. Do you understand? So that gives you a method of solving such questions in general. I hope that really helps. So I have provided you with links here. To show you a few examples where this concept will be applied for known values of a and b and you can easily find the length l i'll request you to actually when you see those videos solve the question on your own using this method and then check solution that will really help i'm anil kumar you can subscribe to my videos and learn a lot i hope that really helps thank you and all the best